I know what you're thinking. He's doing a comedy? What? Oh, well, it's one of the greatest comedies of all fucking times. You bet your ass I am. Okay, everybody, today we're taking a look back at 1980s used cars. Oh my God, this is one of the greatest comedy motion pictures of all time. Possibly one of my, my, my favorite. I don't know. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's at the top of the list. So, before we go any further, before we look at this masterpiece of laughter, we are going to do what we always do so many times and time and time again. We're going to the trailer. Coming this summer from Columbia Pictures, a movie that asks the question, would you buy a used car from this man? Oh, here at New Deal Used Cars, we are uh, stripping away inflation. We're taking off those high prices. Or this one. We have a group of immoral charlatans masquerading as businessmen. They will stoop to the lowest. Oh, Roy. 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 Would you buy a used car from this yeah, man? Sign your name. Ray. Uh, or from this man. I don't want you to look inside. No, I don't want to look inside. Oh, just get in the car. Get in the, get in the Well, these people did. Used cars about a group of dedicated businessmen who'll do anything to sell a car. We can't do a commercial wearing these. We'll come off looking like a couple of. $695, you got it. Let's take a look under the hood, shall we? What? Whoa! Hey, look, fair Now wait just a minute, what the hell is this? Is this a 1977 450 SL for $24,000? That's too Used cars. It's a dirty business. Okay, this little gift from God was directed by Robert Zemeckis. Now, he's got a I mean, come on, man. How many movies can you do that are hits before somebody makes you down into, like, legendary category? We're talking Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, Back to the Future 3. We're talking, he did Forrest Gump and Amazing Stories and uh, Romancing the Stone and Death Becomes Her, uh, The Polar Express, What Lies Beneath. Uh, he even did uh, Contact with Jodie Foster, which is a really, really good flick. And I don't think I ever got the level of oomph that it should have gotten. But... He did all that kind of stuff, and he did this way back in the day. Top-level dude, made a top-level flick of this top-level comedy. Let's get going to the cast. Okay, playing Rudy Russo. Mm. Kurt Russell. Man, favorite actor out there. Comedy, drama, you name it. He does it, and here he slays it. Some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Well, we all know Kurt Russell, folks. We're talking Escape from New York. We're talking The Thing. We're talking Swing Shift, Big Trouble in Little China, uh, Breakdown, uh, Soldier, uh, uh, Tombstone, uh, Executive Decision, uh, uh, The Best of Times. I mean, he, he was in a movie called The Mean Season, which is criminally overlooked and forgotten too. I know I say it a lot, but it was, oh my God, him and Richard Jordan, it was fucking phenomenal. And he's been in 10 other million things that I can't even get to because, hey man, long career. Anyway, let's get going. Play in Roy L. Fuchs and Luke Fuchs, you'll understand why later, is Jack Warden. Holy fucking sheep shit. And if you want to see acting on display, you just watch this shit. But, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, Jack Warden. He's been in things like uh, uh, Heaven Can Wait and Mighty Aphrodite and uh, While You Were Sleeping and uh, The Verdict and, and Injustice for All and Beyond the Poseid Adventure. Yeah, I didn't really care for that that much, but it just came to mind. And Death on the Nile and The White Buffalo and The Champ and Twelve Angry Men and uh, uh, All the Presidents. Men. Dude, oh, he's been in so much shit you can't even believe it. I mean, legendary, legendary, legendary. 
playing Barbara Jane Fuchs with Deborah Harmon. Yeah, she popped up in like Bachelor Party and shit, but let's face reality, TV actress, basically all of her career, that's what she is, that's what she did, that's what she does, and here we go. She was in stuff like, you know, Laverne and Shirley and the, the Ted Knight Show, uh, Quincy and, and Growing Pains and uh, Sledgehammer, but she's going to probably, for us that remember it, be mostly known for being the wife on Just the Ten of Us, which was a comedy show way, way, way back in the day. I don't think I've ever seen it in reruns floating around. I don't know what happened to it. Who the fuck knows? They never show it. They never play it, or I can't find it. It is what it is, but it was popular when it was out. <laughs> Playing Jeff. Oh, <laughs> and this is one of my favorites. Garrett Graham. <sighs> We'll get to his performance later. Anyway, been in a bunch of clear, clear, classic shit. I mean, I'm stuttering over myself. I'm so goddamn excited. We're talking Terror Vision. We're talking he was in Child's Play 2. Phantom of the Paradise, which is legendary. And Demon Seed. And uh, uh, Rat Boy. And Last Resort. And Chopping Mall. He was in tons of TV work. And he was also in a favorite of mine called Beware of the Blob. It was like the blob meets comedy, but still horror. Oh, God, I love that movie. I love that movie. Shirley was in it, too. You know, what's her name that played Shirley and Laverne and Shirley? Laverne and Shirley comes up a lot in this. You'll see why. Okay, playing Jim was Frank McRae. <sighs> Tons of shit. We're talking everything from The Last Action Hero. We're talking to uh, 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 Loaded Weapon and uh, Red Dawn and Lock Up, uh, License to Kill. He popped up in uh, Rocky II and 48 Hours and uh, Norma Ray and Hard Times and Fist, uh, uh, Paradise Alley. Uh, he, oh, he was in fucking 1941. That great motion picture. He was in, he was in The End with Burt Reynolds and Don DeLuise, for Christ's sakes. And I'm going to have to carry that because that movie, uh, it should be on everybody's least top 20 list of comedies to shit Dom DeLuise. Whatever, whatever. That's the story for another day. Let's keep going. Okay, playing Sam with Joe Flaherty. Come on, man. We've all seen his face. As soon as you see his face next to my head, you're going to be like, son of a bitch, I know that guy. Yes, you know that guy. Been in a ton of shit, folks. A ton of shit. We're talking everything from One Crazy Summer to Club Paradise and Inner Space and Slackers and tons of TV shit like Freaks and Geeks and uh, Maniac Mansion. But really, for me, somebody my age, he's always going to be from SCTV. That's right, folks. Second City Television spawned so many great people from John Candy and all those. Ah, oh, man. SCTV was the shit back in the day. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, look at the hell up. You'll get the shit laughing hard. Okay. Playing the hacker extraordinaires was David Lander and Michael McKean. Now, I'm not going to get into their careers. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. I got to keep moving. But they were Lenny and Squiggy from Laverne and Shirley. That's all you need to know. Lenny and fucking Squiggy. If you don't know who Lenny and Squiggy were, I don't even know what to say. To kids in my generation, do you know how many times we got yelled at for just breaking in the houses? Not thieving like, but like walking into houses and friends and family and stuff like that, just whipping the doors open and going, hello, just like that. Because of that show, that shit was awesome. Uh, whatever. I, uh, uh. Okay, finally playing the judge was Grandpa Al Lewis. We all know Al Lewis, the monsters, all that kind of shit. He was in this too. There's a lot of people in this. That's, that's all I can say. Let's get good into the story. There's so much to cover, so much to do. We got to keep going. Okay, as always, and once and again, I'm going to try to make this short, I'm going to try to make it fast, I'm going to try to do it in 90 seconds, I'm going to give you the bare bones of this. There's two brothers, they have two competing car lots. You got Royal Fuchs, he's an asshole, rich prick, doesn't give a fuck about nobody but himself, he's kind of evil. And his brother, Luke Fuchs, who has this misfit band of car salesmen across the street, working at this shit lot, and just trying to keep that place going, selling their shit cars. Well, turns out a freeway is going to be coming through pretty soon. So Royale says, I got to get my brother's lot. It's on the safe side of the street, and I'm going to do anything to get it, including kill him, which he basically kind of does. Anyway, the boys figure out what happened. And by the boys, I mean this misfit tag tag crazy ass group of sons of bitches headed by Kurt Russell playing Rudy fucking Russo and Rudy Russo is the sleaziest swarmiest bullshittiest fucking salesman you ever met in your life but he's got a kind of a, 
heart of gold underneath all of it. Anyway, Rudy, he has this deal going with Luke Fuchs. Luke's was going to give him some cash because he wants to do what anything else that a car salesman winds up wanting to do as their aspiration in life. He wants to be a fucking goddamn senator. Is what it is. Politics, you know how it goes. Anyway, the boys know that the brother killed their boss and they're trying to hide it from everybody because they don't want that son of a bitch across the street to get the lot. In the middle of this, Luke's daughter shows up out of nowhere, adding to the confusion, adding to the drama. Who's going to get the lot? How are the boys going to protect the lot? Are they going to protect her even from her? Are they going to protect it just from Royale? Is there going to be a great big team up between the boys and the daughter? You can see it coming. You know it's going to happen. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a ride. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Used Cars is simply put one of the most gut-busting motion pictures you will ever watch in your life. The directing, I already told you, it's Robert Zemeckis. You might think that this is just some crazy comedy, and in a way, it kind of it is. It's kind of almost like a grindhouse comedy with a big budget. I mean, you've got swearing, you've got nudity, You've got car chases, you've got fist fights, you've got everything, but it's done on such an upper class level because the directing is so spot on, the writing is so spot on, and the comedic talents of this cast is amazing. Kurt Russell is, as Rudy Russo is just phenomenal. You're like, how can this guy be Snake Plissken and Elvis? And how can he be this? And how can he be fucking from Big Trouble in Little China? You know what I mean? How can he cover that much range? Well, he can, and he does it amazingly. Watching Jack Warden play two characters in this motion picture and play them both believably. When he's playing Roy L, you hate his guts. You want to punch him in the face. And when he's playing Luke, you just want to hug him and you just want to help him and you want to protect him. It's fucking amazing. And it doesn't turn into that shit like, you know, when Jean-Claude Van Damme plays two fucking characters or something. This is like you're watching two completely different human beings and it's still played by the same actor. That's how good, that's how good the performance was. You've got the rest of the cast, which just does amazing. I mean, come on, the whole fucking Lenny Squiggy angle in here, which was put in just for fucking gags. Those guys work so well together and have been working together for so long. Their timing is impeccable and it's perfect. Garrett Graham, holy shit, phenomenal actor. I don't know how he didn't have a bigger career. I don't know how. I don't get it. I don't understand. He was so good in this. He was amazing. He was funny as hell. I mean... I can't tell you how many times through my life, my first two cars were red, by the way, you'll get what that means after you watch the movie, did I come up to a friend and say, it's a red car, Rudy, it's a red fucking car. This motion picture was amazing. And what makes it great is, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of farcical, too. I mean, it's hyper comedic realism. It's that kind of shit where it's like, you can see these people, you know these people. But it's just an amped up version of these people, almost like you would get in something like a Three's Company or some shit like that. It's just hyper-realized characters. But every character has a sub-level which makes it so much more interesting and so much more entertaining and so much more thought-provoking. Because Rudy's not just a fucking shit-talker and a schemer. He's got a good heart. The guys are all whack packs but they mean the right thing. They want to do the good thing. It's one of those motion pictures, folks, that you're going to sit back. If you've watched it and you know what I'm talking about, you already know why I'm ranting about it, because it's fucking amazing. If you haven't seen it, please, above all else, take this weekend coming up, whatever it is, get a copy of, stream, I don't give a fuck how you do it, watch used cars. One of the great Ameri they made they made a remake of it several years later with that fucking twat waffle from fucking goddamn Entra. Fuck that shit. That movie sucks. This movie is one of the great American comedies of all times, of any generation. And I'm telling you now, it doesn't feel dated. Yeah, the cars are going to look older, but it doesn't feel dated. It feels like it could happen today. It felt like it could happen tomorrow. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter. This comedy will work anytime, any place anywhere. Everybody, as always, be safe, be good, look out for one another. 
think kindly of your fellow man. And before anything else on that list, don't ever take no bullshit from nobody. Take it easy, folks.